So I am going to ask a few questions for our panelists, and then I'll open up the floor to Q&A. So please think about some questions that you would like to ask um, our lovely panelists. Um, so I guess we can start off with Sahil, but, and we can just go down the line. But maybe you guys can give these students a feel for why did you start, why, why did you want to start research, and specifically, why did you want to start material science research? Sure. So um, back when I was an undergrad, uh, a freshman trying to decide what to uh, major in, um, I was looking at a couple different fields, and I uh, took the Intro to Material Science class at my undergrad, and I was really fascinated by the idea that all of the materials that we interact with day to day, uh, those, the, the behavior of those materials are determined by atomic and nanoscale characteristics. And that idea just blew me away, and I was hooked from that point onwards. Um, I got involved in research uh, uh, during my first year as well as an undergrad. And um, I thought that that was a really important experience for me in terms of uh, developing skills that I could then use uh, in other activities that I pursued later on. Um, it also uh, you know, helped show me what people are actually interested in material science and how people are going about solving problems uh, in the real world using materials. And um, I really liked the intellectual freedom that you have with research. Uh, you get to you know, choose what you're doing day to day, um, if you are getting bored by one thing, you can learn a different technique and start studying uh, what you're working on in that way as well. And uh, that sort of uh, then helped me realize I wanted to go to grad school. And um, yeah, so now I really enjoy what I do because I get to do all sorts of things every single day. And every day is different and exciting as a researcher. Olivia? Yeah. Um, Kind of similar to Sahil, I thought in my classes I learned a lot about how the small structures of things dictate larger structures and how that can be used for so many different applications. Um, and while classes were really cool, I thought it was way, way more interesting to actually use what I had learned in the classroom in research. So I could see like, oh, this weird quantum thing that I don't use ever outside of this equation is actually useful in some kind of uh, labeling technique or something like that. So the fact that I could see things that I had learned on paper be used in real life, I really, really enjoyed. And also, um, for me, I'm a lot on the engineering application side of thing. Um, and so I like the thought that what I'm doing, what I'm researching and learning can someday be applied to real world things. Like maybe I can help someone's medical something or store energy or something like that. So that's why I like research. I got involved because um, other people were doing it. And I was like, oh, it's cool, sure. <laughs> and uh, basically, I like cold emailed a bunch of professors. And a few emailed me back. And they're like, yeah, let's talk. We have space. Uh, we can get you in. And so it was a really chill process, at least for me, on getting into research. Um, yeah. Echoing a lot of the things that Sahil and Olivia said, um, I also got involved in research um, partially because there was a program similar to the ones that Raj has mentioned in my undergrad, and a lot of the people I knew were also doing this program. So I decided to do research in uh, material science related fields, largely because I wanted to do more hands on type of stuff than the things that you learn in class. It feels more like a real world experience than when you're taking tests or doing homework. And so I really enjoy that feeling of doing something real that is making an impact. And doing research while you're in school is probably one of the best ways to interface what you're learning in class and what you're doing in lab. Hi everyone, my name is Alden. Um, I got involved with research through the REU program, research, research Experience for Undergrads, the summer program in the math side department. Um, and I don't know how I found that, honestly. Probably a Google search or something like that, but I'm really glad I did it. <laughs> um, I got connected. It was the first COVID summer, so it wasn't even in person. Like I didn't get to hang out with everyone in person, which was really sad. But even so, I made a few friends virtually that ended up becoming awesome study partners for classes. And through the program, was able to 
get connected to some other grad students and I talked to those grad students about like their experience with research and found one that I really like resonated with and he was really awesome and he connected me to some friends he had who had this company. Long story short, long chain of really nice, awesome scientists connected me to an internship that I ended up taking a gap year to do. So I was able to work for a year in a lab um, working on perovskite solar cells, which were mentioned a little bit earlier, basically like cool new solar technology and totally loved it. Um, and that was really amazing. But the hard part was at the beginning feeling like, oh, I don't have any skills. You know, I just finished math 21. Why would anyone want me? Um, they want you, they want you. It's okay that you don't have skills yet. Maybe some of you do, maybe some of you have done research in high school or are a little bit older in undergrad and have already done research. But if you haven't, that's totally okay. I know the imposter syndrome can feel really real, but there is literally nothing you could have done up till now that would like disqualify you from being a good researcher or disqualify you from like, you should apply to do cool REU programs. Not just Matt's side, like other departments also have cool summer research programs, internships anywhere. You're not supposed to know everything yet. You're doing totally fine. You're doing so great. So wherever you're at now is like so perfect and just apply to cool programs so you can learn more. And uh, if you wanna talk more about research, you can always like get coffee with me because I know the imposter syndrome. I'm here to talk you out of it. That mean voice in your head is not right. You're so smart and you're so awesome. Yeah, snaps to that. Um, but hello, I got here a little late. I ran from chemistry lecture, but my name's Victoria. I'm a sophomore, probably going to study material science. Um, um, but yeah, so the way I got involved with material science is like a little random. So I came in thinking I was gonna be pre-med and do bio E or just like hum bio or something like classic, classically pre-med. Um, and then I had come into Stanford knowing that I wanted to do research just because it seemed really cool. Um, and I happened to meet Sarah Heilshorn on a Zoom call fall quarter. So she actually teaches Intro to Material Science. Some of y'all might be in that class right now. But she's really cool and she basically talked about how she was using her knowledge in chem chemical engineering and material science to um, make some like really cool medical and biological applications. So I thought she was super cool. She seemed really nice. So then I kind of stalked her a little bit. And then I um, went to another event where she was talking and um, kind of got to know her there. And then I applied to two RU programs, the bio E and the math side one, specifically to try to get into Sarah's lab. And fortunately for me, I did. Um, and I got in through the Matsai REU program, and so I did that this past summer, and I thought it was really cool. I met a lot of really cool material scientists, um, and I really enjoyed the community, and I really appreciated um, how um, Dr. Kumar and the rest of the Matsai department here it was really dedicated to undergrads and I had seen how other people's experiences were in other departments um, and I kind of decided that Matsai was for me and I was not going to deal with those other departments <laughs> um, and so I'm here now and I'm super excited about material science now I never thought I would be steered down this path but here I am and we'll see where that takes me. Cool, um, so we're running a little bit short on time. We have like 15 minutes left, so I do have some other questions to ask these panelists, um, but I really want to answer your guys' questions. So I will open the floor up now to audience Q&A. Um, if you don't want to raise your hand and speak out loud, that's totally okay. Feel free to email me at this last email address over here. I will be checking my phone throughout this Q&A process and answer your questions as well. So. Does anyone have any questions to ask? Um, you can direct your questions towards all of the panelists or one particular panelist. Doesn't matter. We're here to help. Yes. Towards like, all the panelists, um, I don't really know what happens. Like, what does doing research mean? Like, what do you do every day at the lab? Um, OK, so I'm just going to repeat that because I'm being recorded. But um, a student asked, what does doing research mean? Like, what do you do in a lab? So I guess I can tell you what my day-to-day -day activities are. So um, 
My research is generally uh, concerning designing like nanostructured materials that interact with light in cool ways and then making devices out of that. So I get to uh, run simulations. So that's sort of my desk work for my computer uh, using simulation software to design these materials. And then I'll go into the nanofab on campus and uh, do some fabrication to actually make these nanostructures. And then I get to go into the optics lab and shoot lasers at these materials and uh, do measurements on their response. So uh, r doing research can look like a lot of different things, but uh, you know, generally the process is uh, coming up with some cool question that you're interested in and then um, either running some simulations or doing some experiments to test out that question. Uh, very similar to Sahil, I guess a big part of research is like coming up with the questions and so to do that generally either I ask my advisor like what does he think is cool um, and I read papers so that's like the beginning part of research where you're like okay what is out there what can I improve on and then I do experiments I make hydrogels um, and I test their mechanical properties and then I also do animal work but that's another thing so that's my day-to-day -day. and then analyzing data making graphs and other such things um, yeah, so as other people have said, research can look like a lot of different things. I personally have been on two very different projects. My first project was very materials heavy, like I was working in lab a lot, mixing different chemicals, measuring their melting points, um, and doing all sorts of real hands-on experiments. Um, now the project that I'm on is a lot more computational. I'm using data from batteries to then predict how long we think batteries of this kind are going to last. Um, and that's a lot less hands-on, a lot more computational. And um, going into lab for that is mostly just setting up the batteries on the cyclers and um, then letting them run for a while and going in to check on them every once in a while. Um, but research can look like a lot of different things depending on what you're interested in. I'm not gonna repeat what everyone just said, but it's really, really fun and my personal favorite part is the characterization step, which for me is like at the end, after I've made something cool, just like sticking it in a bunch of different machines and seeing what I made. It feels like the same energy of like spending like four days planning for a really like meticulous, cool seven course meal and finally eating it. You know, you get to like try out what you made and it's really fun. Yeah, I guess to give like a different response maybe, um, something I didn't realize that researchers do is a lot of computer work and like w working with different software. And so this summer I spent a lot of time just processing images on like software and kind of doing like some calculations with that. So it can vary from like very hands-on things in like a wet lab or something to doing computational things or anything on like a computer. Yeah. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, given that there is a fair bit of overlap between the specializations that you mentioned, uh, how did you go about narrowing your interests or what advice would you give to newer students and looking for opportunities uh, in specific fields? <laughs> Um, just to restate the question, um, the student asked, how did you go about finding the research area for you? So. When I was an undergrad uh, trying to find like, my first research experiences, um, I, how did I do this? <laughs> um, I think that I was uh, looking at the sorts of applications that people were working towards and tried to find something that seemed really exciting to me. And then as I got more into my research and understood the, like, the techniques that I was using to work on these problems, then I wanted to learn other techniques. And so I started an experimental group, and then I switched to a fully computational group. And uh, I liked that too, and I liked my previous work. And so when I came to grad school, I was like, I don't want to just choose one of these things. And so then I chose a field where I could do a lot of different techniques. But uh, past that, I also wanted to work with great people and work in a group that had a very supportive group culture. And I felt like, uh, uh, so I currently work with Jen Dion, and I felt like she did a really good job of uh, fostering a supportive group culture. And I really uh, bonded well with the students who were already in the group. And so I felt like 
working in that sort of environment was uh, the best fit for me. Yeah, whoever wants to answer, really. Okay. Like, if you don't want to answer, just pass the mic okay. along. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, first of all, I really like polymers. I took some polymers classes, and I was like, this is really cool. I like this topic. And so then I looked up the polymer labs that were in my undergrad institution, and I talked to them. And whoever wanted me, I kind of, like, went to them, and it turned out to be a really great experience. I really enjoyed it. And then once I learned a whole lot more about it, I found that I wanted to be on the more application side. And then so for grad school, I looked into biomaterials applications of polymers. And like Sahil, especially in my graduate school, I was really focused on group culture and I wanted somewhere that I was gonna be comfortable for five years. Uh, so in undergrad, I think I picked by topic, but then now I've picked by topic and then like comfort and liking the people. Uh, for me, I think the the big picture was like way more important than like the detail of what I was actually working on. So I knew I wanted to do something related to sustainability and like didn't particularly care about what exactly I worked on. So then I that's how I focused in on the group that I was uh, that I ended up joining. And now that I've been there for a while, I have a better idea of what exactly I want my career to look like. And so I've been shifting my project to more sort of match my career goals. But you don't have to know exactly what you want to work on when you first start doing research. Um, it's something that really evolves over time, especially as you learn more about what you like doing and what you don't like doing. Ditto on the starting with the big picture thing. I just knew I wanted to work on something that impacted the climate. But now I'm on another internship search because that's how college works, unfortunately. <laughs> and fortunately, it just never ends. Um, I need to figure out what I'm doing this summer. And instead of focusing, now, now I'm looking at it through the lens of like what skills I want to gain. Like That's a big thing for me. So although I really like solar, I'm like confused about if I think that's gonna have the impact that I want it to have. But the other consideration I have is I don't think I wanna work in solar again because I wanna get new skills. So looking at your opportunities in the realm of like what skills am I hoping to learn? Am I hoping to like really hone in my computational skills? Can I find a lab that's doing stuff like that? Do I wanna get better at coding? Do I wanna get better at like wet lab chemistry? Do I find it really fun to do that? I, turns out I'm a total characterization nerd. Who knew? I love that part of it. Like I cannot express how excited it makes me. And I literally did not know it existed this time a year ago. So like figuring out what skills you wanna learn and then chasing that can be a cool way to go about it too. Yeah, I think I'm in a way earlier stage than everyone else here um, in like the research experience. But um, I guess I knew I wanted to do something biomaterials, tissue engineering related. And luckily, I ended up getting along with my research mentor a lot. Um, I still talk to her all the time. Um, and I got along with my PI, too. So I'm currently at the stage of trying to figure out like what about the research I liked or what was kind of more just me liking the people around me and trying to figure out what my specific interests are. So right now I'm still kind of more in the broad stage of like material science, biomaterials, but I'm hoping to explore different fields in that this year. And maybe just one more quick thing I'll, I'll add on this topic is that students uh, have this question all the time of I'm interested in a lot of these different things and I don't know how to choose or I don't know how to kind of get started. So I think our, our panelists did a great job of saying that uh, so in some sense it doesn't really matter because if you're in a good situation where you're learning some of these important skills and research, it will be applicable down the line no matter what you end up doing uh, for your ultimate career or your next step or whatever it is. So um, if, if you look at folks who have graduated from our department, you know, things that they do after they graduate often look very different than the research they were doing as an undergraduate or even as a graduate student. So um, I think just picking things that you think are interesting now is, is a great way to start. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Um. Okay, um, for the... There was an uh, option for like Vanderbilt stuff and University of Washington, I think it was. Are those online or are they at the other universities? How does that work? Yeah, maybe I can take this question. So uh, there are some great uh, web pages at other universities uh, that look very similar to um, that, that overview of undergraduate research that we have on our web page. So um, if you click on some of those links, uh, they'll show 
some of the research opportunities at those universities, but also elsewhere. Um, so I think the one that I'll highlight the most is uh, there was a link on, on Pathways to Science. Um, that is a uh, organization that is intended to try to uh, increase access to research in, in all sorts of different people, both at the high school level, undergrads, grad students, you name it. Um, so if you look there, you can find a whole host of opportunities uh, sort of all over the country. Um, so especially for those of you who maybe you know, want to go back home over the summer, uh, you might you know, check out some research programs uh, at, at universities or national labs or, or other research institutions uh, near your hometown, for example. Um, that can be a great way to, to get involved uh, and still be you know, somewhat close to home. All right, um, so I am going to just do a wrap-up question for our panelists. Um, these three grad students, they have all mentored undergrads before. So Saho, Olivia, and Davy, can you guys go over what you hope your undergrads can take away from a research experience as a mentor? And Alden and Victoria, since you were just in their shoes a couple of years ago, maybe you can give some advice, some last-minute advice to these students. I think the the big thing that I hope that undergrads that I work with get out of doing research is just figuring out um, whether it's a good fit for them and then figuring out what they want to try out next. Uh, you know, as an undergrad, you have so many opportunities thrown at you all the time, and uh, it can be really hard to navigate, but I think that doing research is a really cool opportunity to just learn some very fundamental problem-solving skills and, uh, and then using those to then figure out what you want to do next and what you want to do after undergrad. Yeah, I think building some basic research skills and like comfort in a laboratory is a really big part of your first undergrad research experience. Like, I don't do at all what I was doing in my first undergrad lab, but I learned how to use a balance, and I learned how to wear a lab coat and all that stuff. And I think that was like the most valuable part of it. That and like forming connections with people who I can talk about science with. Um, and maybe you'll get to form your own research project, or maybe you'll just be a pair of hands to help a grad student out with their project and learn a whole lot that way. So like, there's a big variety, but I think Gaining some comfort and skills is the best thing that I liked about it. Yeah, in addition to all of those things, uh, I think also being able to see why the work you're doing is important is also a great thing to be able to get out of your research experience. Um, and in addition to that, of course, being able, to say, being able to say that you did an internship is just a huge boost for any future career plans that you might have had, because you had the opportunity to uh, to pose a research question, even if it's not yours, you understand why that question is important, and then you take the steps to figure out how to answer that question. I think a big thing for me was like building a science identity. Within MathSci, some people are like, oh, I'm a scientist. Some people are like, oh, I'm an engineer. Kind of depends on the person and the project. But even within engineering, whatever it is, um, building an identity as like an engineer or as a scientist can be kind of hard, you know, especially for those of us that feel a lot of imposter syndrome all the time. Um, it's rough, you know? And I like, there was a moment where I realized, like people would ask me like, oh, like, so what do you do, whatever. And there was a moment where I transitioned from saying like, oh, like I study engineering or I study science. Like, oh no, I am a scientist or I am an engineer. It's really cool to be able to like hold that identity because you've done it, you know, you've done the work and it's a really different vibe. And then like building that resilient identity um, by having like awesome mentors who can help you through roadblocks, like having that identity stay strong. Because at the beginning, you know, I took like Chem 31M and I failed my first midterm and I was like, well, that's it. You know, like, there I go. No engineering for me, I guess, which is hard. But when you have an internship, you build a community, you build mentors who can comfort you when you don't do well in a class. Like Dr. Kumar comforts me all the time when I don't do well in classes, my go-to. Um, and it's so awesome to build a community of people who will remind you when you fail a midterm or mess up an experiment or whatever, there's gonna be roadblocks, but that you're still awesome, you're still gonna be a really amazing scientist or engineer, you matter. Um, building that community is really powerful. Yeah, um, I think uh, kind of going off of what she said, I think it's really important to find people who can mentor you and kind of guide you through kind of 
building up to your dream career. Um, so my research mentor was really helpful and um, she like checks my applications for things. Um, she like edits my posters and my PowerPoints um, for like presentations and like poster sessions and things like that. Um, and I talked to her about like what other research experiences or internship opportunities I can do now and like how to kind of build my four year plan. But um, aside from kind of those like broader career um, things, she also, mentored me in how to even just start doing research. She was very cognizant of the fact that I like came into the lab knowing nothing. And so we started with like just how to have basic sterility techniques in the hood, um, how to uh, use different software. She would like sit with me and read scientific papers and just like walk me through everything they were saying so I could just learn about uh, the field of biomaterials. Um, so she was really awesome and she did a lot. Um, I don't know how other mentors are, but like I would just suggest to try to find those kinds of people who are willing to help you um, and guide you through all these different aspects of um, kind of your four year experience here at Stanford and like find those people who are willing to help um, like help you with all those things like applications and um, help you find those opportunities and to like help you not get imposter syndrome and encourage you through that process. All right, um, that's all the time we have right now, but can we please thank our panelists and please thank Dr. Kumar for being here. And we will be sending out uh, all of this information that you just saw in an email. We have your emails from the RSVP form. And please contact us if you have any questions. You can reach Dr. Kumar or me at these emails. And we hope to see you in some labs these upcoming years. Thank you guys so much.